So initially I thought this unit was completely fixed because after I repaired the output section I tried out the FM radio and the FM radio worked but only on mono and as soon as I put it in the stereo it cut out. One of the channels cut out and the other channel was still there so I thought there was a problem with the FM decoder section. It ended up being um, basically some circuit board work had to be done, some soldering and now what I'm going to do is adjust the what Yamaha calls the 19 kilohertz um, VCO which is VCO of course stands for voltage controlled oscillator I think uh, when you do this adjustment I think that's compared with the 19 kilohertz um, basically pilot signal coming in you know over the airwaves and if this adjustment is off then your stereo light is not going to come on and you're not going to be able to get any stereo and you're supposed to adjust this to basically 19 kilohertz or 19,000 hertz plus or minus 20 hertz also I might add somebody had been playing with this uh, or working on this unit before and um, somebody had uh, misadjusted the stereo separation which uh, then is my next adjustment after this one so down here is the adjust on the tuner board and this is the adjust right here and right here we can see the test lead of my frequency counter that is the nine says right here even says right here 19 kilohertz test point I got the frequency counter basically hooked up and I've got everything here well I do have it in stereo mode Let's see what happens when it mono no doesn't make a difference because this 19 um, kilohertz signal I think that I'm adjusting now is actually put out is made here in the receiver itself in the uh, basically stereo decoder chip so I'm gonna go ahead and now we got 19,000 around 19,100 Hertz I'm gonna go ahead and adjust here That's just a real slight adjustment is gonna make like a giant difference um, you could probably get away with um, if you don't have a frequency counter like here this is the midpoint right there where I'm at right now you see here's the front of the receiver and if this is straight up and down this should be the midpoint and here's the here's the extreme position I turned it all the way and here's the other extreme all the other way but you know if it came from the factory I mean this is not going to be the, the, the position that uh, that it's going to be in it's going to be in the middle somewhere so you can make left and right adjustments so I'm going to go ahead and see say if I didn't have a frequency counter and if I put it right in the middle I'm going to see actually how close I could get it I mean it I have did it this way before like working on boom boxes um, if I, when I didn't use the counter I just turned it to in the middle between the extreme positions and that uh, made the stereo light come back on so let me see if that's um, how close this is. Oh, it's 18,971. So I'm 29 hertz off. So is this straight up and down? Yeah, almost. Of course, it's more accurate to use the frequency counter. So now let me see. Uh, 19,052 so I am gonna have to use the uh, watch the frequency counter when I'm doing this so I can't hold the camera and um, do the adjustment at the same time and watch the frequency counter so I'm gonna have to shut the camera off now so here it goes um, I did the adjust and I came out to 19,000 and four Hertz and you're supposed to have 19,000 plus or minus 20 Hertz that would be um, 18,000 
980 hertz would be the lower limit and 19,000 um, and 20 hertz would be the upper limit so I'm good to go now let me go ahead and to over to the next um, next part of my little project here which is the stereo separation for that I need to use a uh, FM stereo generator it's probably kind of hard to do without that I mean you might be able to get away with it if you take a pair of loudspeakers and put them exactly equidistant from you so I mean it wouldn't be lopsided like one wouldn't be six feet from you the other one eight feet but you'd be exactly in the middle and then you'd have to adjust the balance control correctly and then see if you can do by ear that way but I'm gonna go ahead and use the um, FM stereo generator I'm gonna use an oscilloscope which is a more accurate method so for this test I'm gonna be using my leader LSG 231 old um, FM stereo signal generator which I got her at on eBay for about a hundred bucks or so um, I really like I really like this thing I mean it's not too stylish show but it's very uh, compact and easy to use and of course I've got my dual trace oscilloscope and I've got the here running the coax cable that's going into the 75 um, ohm antenna input of the receiver there and I'm going to feed in a pretty low level signal here um, right now I'm using basically the lowest output here since I'm feeding into the antenna um, input I think it's like 0.1 millivolt or something like that um, somewhere around there I'm not exactly sure so what I'm going to do now is basically dial in the receiver by turning the tuning knob to the output of the signal generator since this thing is basically just a mini mini um, transmitter so I just turn the tuning knob I got loudspeakers hooked up until <clears throat> basically I hear something coming out through the loudspeakers and of course I'm going to use the also use the um, the tuning meter of the receiver so and I've got the course the receivers in stereo mode and I got all the tone controls and all that other stuff that's flat and I gotta I gotta have this on here pilot signals gotta be on and I'm gonna be feeding it in a basically here what's called the L signal that's left channel signal that's gonna be coming in there and let me go ahead and do the dialing in part okay okay that should be it that was step first step so there you can see my output now ideally um this here i'm going to adjust this for maximum and this ideally is supposed to be flat if it's not flat like now that means you got like some kind of crosstalk or, or leakage from one channel into the other channel so what I'm going to do now is uh, get rid of the speakers hook up a dummy load and then do everything there uh, of course I've got the the oscilloscopes in dual trace mode and I got um, basically what I'm doing I got the probes are across the loudspeakers one's across one channel and one's across the other channel well one's across the left channel one's across the right channel is basically what I want to say and of course I've got the volume turned up enough so I'm getting a pretty uh, um, pretty good trace here so I can see what's uh, see what's up oh the dummy loads hooked up now and um, I don't know if I mentioned it, I'm using the coax cable I'm feeding in that into the 75 ohm antenna input now some receivers I've seen they don't have a 75 ohm input I've seen them with 300 ohm input then I would just um, use two basically two 120 ohm resistors across each of the uh, in series with each of the leads and um, 
did that. So let me go ahead and get started here. And here's that adjust down here where my finger is now. Um, I did spray both of these before I started with contact cleaner. And as I said, somebody had been messing with these. I, of course, now I mess with them too since after I sprayed contact cleaner and I, I worked them back and forth. So that's this one here. It's got to be adjusted now. Earlier I did this one, which is that uh, VCO 19 kilohertz adjust. So, yeah, let me go ahead and I got the volume. I got the volume cranked up a little bit more now. So I'm getting a good trace. So again, we want this one here. Now this is the left channel. We want that to be maximum, and we want the basically the leakage from the right channel to be minimum. So we want a flat line. Um, here's what happens when I just feed in a, a R signal or a right channel signal. See, that's that, and then the left channel should be um, basically flat. And this here is, of course, a L plus R. That's just a mono signal. That's why both look the same. Okay, and now if I turn off the pilot signal here, um, where is this thing? Right, right there. And you can see what happens. Right there. It's, uh, yeah, no more you would have no more stereo it would be basically both it would be both channels the same mono and same thing the other with the other one okay then go back to the L right here and let me go ahead and do that um, adjustment oh, I got to turn that positive signal back on okay let me bring I'm gonna bring this down or the other one down Okay, let me go ahead and get a little, let me go ahead and uh, crank this up more and do some more adjustments with the trace. And then I'll go ahead and make the adjustment. And here you can see what happens when I try to make that adjust. Right now I'm holding the camera with my hand. I'm not using a tripod. And I'm trying to turn that pot at the same time. See here, I think it was before. It was something like this or something like that. And now... I want the bottom line to be perfectly flat if I can get it or close to that. Now if I go too far, of course, I'll have the same problem again. So I think that might be it somewhere right there, I believe. So now I did the same thing for the right channel. I um, tried to here to get the the right channel maximum, and with the one trace and the other one minimum. So I might have to go ahead and put it on the left channel again, and then adjust it again, basically like a compromise um, solution. But now. Uh, it should sound a lot better than before. I mean, I'm not an FM expert, but um, this should have did the job. Well, I'm using the FM radio, and the stereo light's coming on as it should. The stereo works, at least as far as it sounds. Sounds good, so I guess that concludes this video, unless I can think of something else.